Welcome to Electro Online. Here we have a cylinder made out of metal covered with insulation and we're trying to find the heat flow from the inside to the outside of the cylinder. Not only do we have to take into account the heat conduction through the metal and the insulation, we also have to take into account the convection transmission of heat from the inside to the metal and from the insulation to the outside. On the inside we have steam at 120 degrees centigrade and on the outside we have air at 35 degrees centigrade. Notice the transmission coefficients on the outside and the inside. On the inside it's quite large because we do have steam on the inside which more readily transmits heat through convection. And we have the, uh, the conductivity constant for metal and for the insulation. Notice the radii, the inside radius of 5 centimeters, the outside of 5.5, which means the thickness of the steel or the metal, we don't know what metal it is, is 0.5 centimeters, and then the insulation goes from 5.5 to 8 centimeters, so it's about 2.5 centimeters wide. So how do we calculate the heat transmission? Well, we have four things we need to consider. The transmission from the inside to the metal, through the metal, through the insulation and from the insulation to the air outside. So our equation will look something like this. Q dot is going to be equal to the difference in the temperature divided by, and we're going to have four terms right here. We have one over H on the inside, and that would be area on the inside, plus the natural log of the, radi of the, the ratio of the radiuses of R2 to R1 divided by 2 pi kl plus, and I guess I need some more line here, the natural log of the ratio of the radii of r3 to r2 divided by 2 pi kl, and of course that would be k of the metal, and that would be k of the insulation. And then plus another term like this for the outside, 1 over h on the outside and the area on the outside. Okay. That should give us the heat transmission. So Q dot is equal to the difference in temperature, 120 minus 35, all divided by 1 over H on the inside, that would be 85, times the area on the inside. Now the area on the inside is going to be the circumference times the length, the length is 1 meter, so it would be uh, 2 pi times the radius on the inside, that needs to be converted to meters, 0 0.05 times 1. So it'll be 1 over h times a, plus the natural log of, now we don't have to convert that to meters because it's a ratio, so r2 to r1 would be 5.5 over 5, divided by 2 pi, multiply times k for the metal, which is 45, and times the length, which is 1. Plus, the natural log of the ratio of the third, that would be 8 over 5.5, divided by 2 pi, times the constant for the insulation, 0 0.07, and times the length, 1. And finally, we have one more term here, plus 1 over h on the outside, which is 12.5, times the area on the outside, which would be the circumference, which is 2 pi, times the radius, which is 0 0.08, and times the length, which is 1. Okay, kind of running out of room here, but I think you're getting the idea. So those are the four corresponding terms. So let's find Q dot. Q dot is equal to 120 minus 35, that would be 85, divided by, and let's calculate each of those terms, because it's kind of interesting to see what they look like. So we have 85, times 2 times pi times 0 0.05 that gives us 26.7 oh did I take the inverse? I don't think I did so I need to take the inverse there we go that would be 0 0.0374 okay plus let's do this one right here so we have 5.5 divided by 5, which is 1.1, take the natural log of that, divide by 2, divide by pi, divide by 45, and we get um, hmm, 0 0.000337 plus, let's do the next one, so we have 
8 divided by 5.5. Take the natural log of that, which is uh, 0 0.37. Wait a minute. Yes, that's correct. So divide by 2, divide by pi, divide by 0 0.07 equals, and we get plus 0 0.85. 852 and finally let's do that one right there we get 12.5 times 2 times pi times 0 0.08 now we take the inverse and we get 0 0.159 0 0.159 so now let's try to understand what these numbers represent in the denominator the bigger the number the more it will prevent heat transmission and notice the biggest number is this third term right here, which is the insulation term. But what's also surprising is that the heat transmission through conduction on the outside, from the insulation to the air outside, also is represented by a fairly large number. Not nearly as much as the insulation, but quite a bit of resistance to the heat flow from the heat trans transferring through convection from the outside insulation to the air. Notice on the inside that number is relatively small because we have steam on the inside which more readily uh, has heat transmitted from the steam to the metal and of course the heat conductivity of the metal is very very small or I should say it's large, the heat conductivity is large so the resistance of the heat flow is very small and that's why this number is really small. So most of it is held up by the insulation then from the convection from the insulation to the air, then from the convection from the steam to the metal, and finally the heat conducted through the metal itself. All right, let's add all these up and see what we get. Plus 0.852, plus 0.000337, plus 0.0374 equals, that gives us Q dot is equal to 85 divided by 1.049 and let's see here so take the inverse of that times 85 so we get 81 watts and that would be the answer because of course it would be in terms of watts heat flow is joules per second or watts and so we have 80 watts of heat flowing through the size of the pipe which is one meter long primarily the heat flow is primarily stymied by that thick layer of insulation and secondly by the heat convection from the insulation to the air and that is how it's done.